All right, so I just wanted to take a moment to talk about settings that I like to use on the Strymon Iridium. I'm using David Hislop's impulse responses, particularly the Celestian V10 uh, vintage speaker. It is the uh, two by 10. I'm using the 545 mic and I'm using mic position three. Um, I'm using the same mic and same position on the other side, on the right side, but I'm using the um, AC30s, the Vox AC30 greenbacks uh, of David Hislop's as well. And uh, I'll give a quick example of what that sounds like after I've kind of set everything up and then we'll break it apart and kind of get an idea how I arrived there. So here is just some clean tone. I've got my compressor on. I'm probably just gonna leave that on throughout this, maybe give examples without it. There's also a tiny bit of compression happening in the DAW just to help lift everything, keep the tones a bit more consistent. So here's clean. <laughs> So right away, what you might notice is that it is a tiny bit dark, but at the same time, there's a few things that I'm trying to keep in mind with the treble being set where it is. Of course, some changes could be made, but what I'm keeping in mind is as I start to actually stack some drives into this or even boost it, it's naturally going to get brighter. Now, this is obviously not a real amp. So what tends to happen with these amp simulators is they start to get a little fizzy on the top end. So you start to lose a bit of clarity and it just kind of becomes almost like a bit of like white noise in a sense. So what I'm trying to do is actually tame a bit of that top end to be a bit more mellow so that whenever I'm adding a drive or a boost, it's still gonna poke out. It's gonna get a bit brighter, but it's gonna maintain some of its articulation and note clarity. Let me give an example. So I'm gonna turn on uh, my light gain stage here, which is the Benson preamp, and let's hear an example. So going from clean. Turn on the Benson. So that got a bit brighter. Now I'm boosting the treble just a tiny, tiny bit on my Benson, because that's my lighter gain stage, so I want it to have some articulation. But what happens if we turn a boost on? So I'm turning on a broken arrow boost here. It's on the blue side uh, boost of that pedal. All the way back to clean. Boost back on with drive. So notice what's happening there. It's getting a lot brighter. It's getting punchy, but it's growly. It has some low end to it. It's got the mid range. And then as it's starting to be boosted, it's brightening up, but it's not just fizzing out and it's not just, you know, nothing but a wall of fizzy kind of grainy top end that amp sims can tend to have. So let's break down exactly kind of what I've got going on here, uh, going from, I'll go ahead and turn off my compressor here, and uh, let's hear what it sounds like, just, you know, absolute guitar straight to the Iridium. foremost, let's actually start at what it looks like when it's plugged in and I'm actually looking at the sort of IR manager menu that this thing has. So what we have on the left side is the Celestion G10 Vintage. And what I've got here is I'm, I'm actually taking some treble away. And I'm, what I'm trying to eliminate is that sort of like 3K to 4K top end pokey tinny thing that I feel like I experience in a lot of amp sims. So uh, I kind of chopped off some of that treble on both of the speakers and uh, I boosted the bass because what I've noticed, at least with this pedal, and actually notice I'm plugged into the headphone jack here. I had been plugging into the quarter inch out, but what I realized is I felt like I was actually losing a lot of the low end. Whenever I plugged my headphones directly into the headphone jack here, I felt like I was actually getting a lot more boomy low end. And so I wanted to see if I could get more of that to work with when I'm plugging into my DAW. And so whenever I went instead from the quarter inch out to the eighth inch out to my interface, I did notice that there was a bit more low end to work with. So at the moment, I'm gonna stick with that. 
So that combined with boosting the low end and the manager there seemed to kind of give me more of what felt like at least just a bit more of an authentic and lively low end. And then on the treble side, I felt like it did kind of cut back some of that pokey top end and then allowed me to sort of manage the treble a bit more by turning the knobs and not highlight as much of that pokey top end. And the reason I actually like David Hislop's IRs a lot is more than anything for the breakup quality. It's from what I've experienced, one of the more authentic sounding breakup IRs uh, that I've ever heard. So I, I really like it for that reason. I can work with the EQ and make whatever necessary changes I need. But whenever you have really fake sounding breakup qualities, there's only so much you can work with there. So after the IR manager, what we're looking at here, of course, is level. Generally, I was having to boost the level uh, to maximum, which you can do, it just depends on what you have to set up at your interface. Basically, when I came out of the headphone out jack here, uh, I noticed I was actually working with a lot more level than the quarter inch out. So I was able to pull it back a little bit and just set it where it's obviously not clipping in my interface. And then from there, what we're looking at, of course, is the drive, bass, middle, and treble. Now, this is all set up on the round or fender type amp in this pedal. And um, that to me was kind of the most well-rounded with EQ and kind of the fullest and fattest sounding yet kind of tasty mid-range and breakup qualities. I'm also not entirely too sure how much that affects the actual IRs if there's like a different type of, I guess you could call it like an amp head going into these IRs. If it is, uh, I haven't experimented much with that, but the round has felt really good to me with this combination of speakers. Now let's take a look at how I like to set up the uh, drive or the sort of like gain or tube saturation of the amp. Now obviously uh, with my compressor still off, if I turn the drive down it's going to be a lot more clean. Now what I'm looking for of course is when I'm playing lightly that it's clean. And then if I go up higher and play something I'm looking for it to kind of sparkle and grit just a little bit. That sounds mostly just kind of clean and snappy and twangy. I'm not really hearing any sparkle. So let's go ahead and bump that up. Now, obviously, if we go too far, it's just gonna be nothing but overdriven. Obviously, like we have a drive pedal on. So I wanna find that sweet spot where it's clean when I play lightly. But whenever I go up high and dig in, it sparkles and grits up a little bit. That's probably a little bit too much. Let's back it off just a little bit. That's not a bad spot. If we were to go a little bit less, what would happen? It becomes too clean. Now, what I'm keeping in mind is the way that this is going to build with pedals. And I'm wanting to build it, of course, where if I have all drive pedals off that it's clean, there is some headroom to work with, but then if I turn on like my first drive pedal, it grits up a little bit, uh, but it's not too overly saturated. So once again, let's go back up a little bit and find that sweet spot. So I'm feeling a little bit of grit from that. I might bump it down just a hair so I have a little bit more to work with. All right, now as far as bass, middle, and treble goes, I've got it maxed out. I mean, what I'm trying to keep in mind is I want the notes to feel full and fat on their own and I don't wanna to have to boost it later or if it actually gets in an engineer's hands and they cut it, I don't want it to feel extremely thin. So I'm looking for there to be a little bit of a natural bass response so that you know if it is sculpted and the low end is cleaned up after the fact that there's that it doesn't just sound thin and like it's completely lacking body. In my opinion, there is a difference between trying to clean up the bass before the uh, engineer's hands versus after. So if you mic up an amp, for instance, and it has a ton of low end, that's going to change the way the notes actually are captured. And even if it is rolled off after the fact, the notes are still, they'll, they'll still have a certain amount of thickness to them, in my opinion. So all that to say, let's, let's hear it, you know, turned down and let's see if we can really hear the difference. It's very subtle on amp sims, in my opinion. <laughs> Let's go halfway. 
I mean, halfway we probably won't notice much of a difference because it was hard to really tell <laughs> much of a difference there. All the way back off. So that's obviously the most noticeable difference there. So max it out. There just felt like there was more body there, like it could growl a little bit more, and that's kind of what I personally want to build off of. That can always be cleaned up after the fact, you know, a little bit of sculpting in the low and the low mids, but I want that body and that growl to the guitar. Now, mid-range is definitely a really important one here, so let's see what happens if we, you know, roll it back a lot. It's very clear right away. We really hear that bass highlighted a lot more there. Um, now. Obviously, if you were to run a little bit less mids, maybe not as little as that was, but just less on the mid range there. You know, it's gonna sound, I guess, cleaner, you could say, but the problem is, is the guitar, the notes, the sound as a whole are just going to sit more tucked backwards. We're not necessarily looking for an over amount of bass or treble to actually sit well in a mix. The guitar is honestly, naturally a really mid range instrument, at least with the way that it sits in modern music for the most part. So let's actually turn that mid-range back up. I want it to sound and feel like the notes have more, you know, forward tone to them and punch a little more. Now let's max it out. Now, it's a little bit kind of almost more on the sort of uh, muffled or muddy or mid-rangey side. It's not bad though. It could be kind of, you know, rock and roll and more forward sounding. I'm just gonna probably pull it back just a little bit, but notice it also got a little bit gritty, a little bit quicker. Now, whether or not this is actually emulating like a Fender does where it's literally applying DB, so technically the volume is raising and causing it to actually break up a little bit quicker, I'm, I'm not positive, but one thing you could do if you were to lower the mids a little bit and want to clean that up, you could actually raise the drive a little bit to reach that gritty level. So it got a little cleaner and more pristine, uh, and yet we're still accomplishing that same amount of grit that I think that I'm looking for. Clean when you play lightly, and yet when you dig in. It grits and breaks up a little bit, but the problem is, is that sounds a little too scooped in the mids for me, though it might have a sort of clean effect, it's not gonna sit very forward in the mix. So let's go ahead and bump that mid-range up quite a bit. Too overdriven. Let's bump that down a little bit. Just a tiny bit less. Cool, that sounds great to me. Now from there, let's take a look at treble. Um, once again, the biggest thing that I don't like about uh, amp sims as a whole is they will often have this very, you know, three to four K tenny thing going on with them. And I'm always looking to tame that for the reasons I described earlier. Now, if we were to obviously roll that off, It honestly didn't get as dark and muffled as I was expecting it to, but what happens if we go on the other side of the equation and we roll it up a lot? Now, in, in some cases that can sound kind of cool, like it's, you know, nice for rhythm stuff, but what happens whenever we go into like a sort of single line note? We're clean right now, and it's kind of just too bright already in my opinion. If I start adding a drive, let's add my first stage uh, overdrive here, my Benson preamp. It almost became this hissy top end focused blanket that was kind of sitting over the entire guitar, it just lost a whole lot of life. So back down to clean. Let's cut down some of that twang and that poke there. Let's bring it down by maybe like 25%. That's honestly sounding like a lot closer of a, of a tone that I'd be looking for, but I think it's still a little too bright for me. I'm gonna allow my dynamics and how much I'm digging in to bring out some of the top end, as well as whenever I start adding drive and boost to bring out more of the top end. Let's 
Let's add the drive. Not bad, it's sounding a little closer. I'm gonna just for fun bring down a little bit more treble. And that can almost seem like it's a bit dark, but like I was saying, I'm building with a certain image in mind for what's gonna happen when I'm putting the pedals into it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my compressor back on and let's see what happens. I'm gonna add uh, you know, some effects. I'm gonna add a big sky cloud, my dark cloud effect, and then I'm gonna add a Strymon Timeline tape delay effect, my general tape delay that I use. Now it could totally be worth mentioning what my compressor is, is a tone press. Uh, that is the core of what my pedal is. And I say core because I kind of have it modded where I have two of them in one box uh, with a different label on it, but it's a tone press compressor, a great compressor. And um, so let's go ahead, now that I've got the effects on and the compressor on, let's add the uh, Benson, my light gain stage and see how this setup handles that. It's honestly, to me, feeling very warm and tasteful and well-balanced, at least for an amp sim. So for chords, it felt nice. What happens if we turn on, you know, the boost with my light gain stage and kind of hit into somewhat of a lead line? I'm gonna turn my reverb down a little bit and let's go over to something like uh, my heavier gain stage, my kilt with my boost. Let's go even heavier. So I'm gonna turn on the red side of my kilt and keep the boost on. So honestly, to me, it's feeling pretty well balanced. Whenever I'm applying a ton of drive and gain and boosting it, um, and even kind of lifting the volume level a little bit, it's kind of accomplishing what I'd be looking for out of a tube amp. It's hitting the, you know, the tubes or the amp a little bit harder, if you will. And so it's getting some of the grit from the speakers versus trying to get a bunch of drive from the pedals. So that's a different topic entirely. We're just looking at obviously how to build the Iridium to maybe take pedals well. So to me, that is kind of how I would like to set up the EQ. So once again, just covering a few main points. Um, the bass is going to be very important because on a lot of amp sims, it feels like they are lacking a lot of low end. So just kind of boosting it however much you can. Of course, if it feels like too much, you'll know it's too much. But don't stray away from fattening up your tone. And then, of course, it can always be molded a little bit and sculpted uh, later on with some EQ. But to not let them feel too thin and lacking body. And then, of course, on the treble side, uh, to try to eliminate that sort of 3K, that sort of 4K pokey tinny thing. To me, it's just too harsh to work with and kind of dialing that back and then allowing your pedals to, in so many ways, hit the amp harder. Uh, it will kind of naturally start to brighten up. So don't try to brighten it up too quickly in advance, but let some of the uh, emulation of the tube saturation do some of the talking because this pedal works pretty well for that. But that lightly covers some of my thoughts on how I would approach this. Uh, once again, I just really love David Hislop's IRs. They are actually really good at emulating some really tasteful breakup qualities uh, that I'd be looking for out of an amp. I can always work with EQ, but man, something that I can't work with is if the breakup sounds like trash. And thankfully, his sound really great.